Insecticides have gotten a lot more popular here over the last couple of years in corn because there have been some cases of rootworm resistance to the BTs. And also, there are just a lot more bugs out there, it seems like, than ever before. I think partially because of reduced tillage and all these corn acres. So anyway, which insecticide are you going to use on your farm, especially if you don't have boxes on the planter. I talk to guys all the time. They buy new planters. Don't get insecticide boxes on. Now that's, what are you going to do? That's right, because guys are going to either three bushel boxes so they don't have room for that insecticide box on the back, or they're going to one big central fill unit. And yes, that's really nice for getting your seed out there, and it's a lot more convenient as far as the seed goes, but it takes away those options on the insecticide portion. So you could either install something like a smart box system, and you know, again, here's a big time equipment investment you're going to have to make on your planter, or you could just put something in with your liquid fertilizer. That sounds pretty easy to me, Brian. <laughs> well, if you're going to put something in with a liquid fertilizer, I cannot tell you how many farmers over the years have tried putting certain materials in there, and then they have a sludge in the tank, they have problems getting that fertilizer out of the planter, getting it out of those little orifices that they're going to use. It can be a major issue, especially when the weather is cold, but you know, they'll be going along sometimes mixing the same insecticide in with the same fertilizer and for whatever reason they get the next batch of fertilizer that comes in on their farm and now it doesn't mix. So we've always cautioned guys, be really careful with this. If you want to do it, you got to use the right products. That's right. And you know, not only are the big ag chemical manufacturers coming up with new products to use. They spend a lot of effort and time working on the right formulation. And that's one thing that FMC came up with with Capture. Capture is being used and with a lot of liquid fertilizers it was great but occasionally there'd be a batch here or there that there'd be some kind of mixing issue. So they get a new formulation. They call it Capture LFR, that's liquid fertilizer ready. I'm not going to say that you're never ever in a million years going to see an issue with it but we've never seen one on our farm. It's been really good for mixing and frankly we start planting sometimes even when there's a little bit of frost still in the ground. So we're out there pretty early and it's kind of cool in those mornings. That's where you normally see an issue. So if you say, well, what can I do to kind of protect myself? Keep your fertilizer warm, keep your insecticide warm, and when you mix them together, things go so much more smoothly. But we know how the real world is. If you're going to take a chance, you're going to have stuff outside, use Capture LFR if you're using a liquid. It's by far the best one. Well, the reason why we like Capture LFR too is it has good activity on a lot of different insects. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's going to be 100% on rootworm all the time. There's no insecticides that's 100%. But if you have this Capture LFR out there, you're going to get probably 80% control, maybe even better than that in some cases. A lot of guys are reducing the rates when they're not too worried about rootworms, and you can still get wireworms and some other pests, maybe even cutworm, all the products that contain pyrethroids. So like Capture LFR, it's a pyrethroid. All of those products are going to be very good on cutworm. So I'd keep those things in mind if you're after Rootworms, yes, we want to make sure you're using that maximum labeled rate. If you're after some of the other insects, probably not that big a deal. You could cut the rate a little. Here's another thing to think about with a pyrethroid insecticide like Capture. You don't have the possibility of those herbicide interactions like we see with the organophosphate insecticides. If you're using products like Counter and Lorsban and Fortress, those products you have to be very cautious what herbicides you're using in your program because there could be interactions in the plant. With pyrethroids like Capture, you don't have those concerns. Well, one one of the things I like the most about the Capture LFR and these pyrethroids are they're inexpensive. You're probably going to spend two-thirds what you would on a dry insecticide and it's pretty easy to work with when all you have to do is throw in that liquid into your fertilizer or if you're just running without fertilizer just throwing a liquid in. Pretty simple and easy pretty safe to work with, so you don't have quite the concerns that you do with some of the other products. Well, speaking about lack of concerns, you can actually put capture on either in the furrow, you could T-band it, you could band it on top of the ground if you want to, depending on what your setup's like. Now, my preference would be to have a separate tank for that capture versus having it all right in with the fertilizer. If you have separate tanks, there is a much smaller chance you would ever have a potential problem. So I like to have separate tanks. That way, you can just flip on that capture on fields that you want it. Maybe you've got a smart stacks hybrid and you say, you know, I don't, I don't want to put on capture on my smart stacks, just want to put it on my VT3 corn. Well, that's fine. You get to that different field, 
Just flip the switch, turn the capture on, and you're protected. But most farmers, even like on our own farm, we just have one setup, one tank, and we are throwing that capture in with the liquid fertilizer on the fields that we want it. Again, a lot of farmers are doing this because of all the concerns with all the different bugs and with rootworm resistance out there. But the other thing is, I mean, let's face it, like in our farm, we're going for over 200 bushel corn. We've got a really good price out there, again, going into 2012. So you say, do I want to take much risk when I can go out there with a full rate of capture for maybe $10 an acre or less? I don't think so. I mean, I'm only, it's only a couple bushels of corn. I want this to help protect my seed. Well, we get questions all the time too. Hey, aren't there generic versions of capture? And there certainly yep. are. And you know what? If you're spraying post-emerge foliar applications in crops that where it's labeled, I think that's fine. But using it pre-emerge where you're going to be potentially mixing it right with fertilizer, there's no way I'd take that chance. Capture LFR is a much better formulation that can actually mix better with those fertilizers so you don't have trouble. Well, once again, many farmers are putting insecticide in on their farms because of the problems that we've had in corn and because of the tremendous potential there is to earn money here in 2012 with that corn crop. Capture LFR is a good choice. There are a lot of other good insecticides as well, but that Capture LFR is really one of the few insecticides that you can use in a liquid form and it will mix with liquid fertilizer. Well, the good thing too about those pyrethroids, there's no herbicide interaction because you're going to need all options available to control our weed of the week. We'll explain later in the show.